All right, hello, welcome back. Um, before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you for the reaction I got to publishing this. I was a little bit nervous, a little bit nervous. I was bricking it, uh, posting on Instagram, and the support I got was insane. I was, I was, I was emotional. Um, it was actually overwhelming, and yeah, big shout out to to everyone who supported it. It was, it was great. So the topic of today's video is those mood fluctuations or those low moods that you can experience during isolation. Um, it's something that is going to be affecting us all realistically and there is little things that you can do to help yourself and hopefully I'll be letting you know. Before I get into the video, I want to emphasize that it is perfectly normal and understandable that you're experiencing these kind of moods. There is so much subconscious anxiety about what's going on at the moment with a pandemic infecting thousands and thousands of people every single day alongside massive socio-economic movements that are changing the world and there is so much going on but it feels like your own world your own reality is at a standstill i don't know about anyone else but i'm not making any progress i'm not changing I'm not experiencing new things. And this can be a very confusing time um, for so much to be happening, yet feels like so little is happening. And alongside this, in everyday lives, we have so many little distractions and things going on that can help us not ignore, but not have to think about everything that's going on in the world because there's so many negatives that are on the news, on the media, that we have no choice but to focus on and this can really build up those negative emotions and make you experience things that you probably wouldn't have felt before or maybe not to so much extent. It's completely, completely normal and understandable to, to be down and to not want to do anything that day, to you know, lose motivation. Uh, I personally haven't been revising because I can't be bothered. And, I mean, it's probably not okay. But... It's understandable and I'm sure so many people are experiencing that. So the first thing I wanted to talk about, a method to talk about, I guess, to sort of handle these emotions is attempting to regain as much control as possible in your life. It's so easy currently to feel this, you know, overwhelming lack of control of what's going on because we're not in control of what's going on a large amount of time. In our normal day-to-day -day business, we do things we control that we enjoy, for example, and that can take our mind off of what we can't control and then, you know, sort of keep us centred into to focus on what we can control and that can make us feel a lot better. So different ways that we can sort of establish this control in our life is, you know, creating a daily routine. I know there's not a lot of stuff you can do at the moment, um, but even things like, waking up at a certain time or going to bed at a certain time and then maybe even having meals at certain times but also planning different activities throughout the day so say you do yoga or something which is actually really hard really hurts but say you do yoga plan that for i don't know 11 o'clock in the morning and then say lunch is at 12 have like an hour just to sit around and do nothing and then if you've got revision to do do revision if you've got, you know, any extracurricular things that you do, different sports, different exercises, all that sort of stuff, just fit it in in a certain time of the day because then that way you have control of what you're doing throughout the day. You you know what's coming next and you know what you've just done. And that can really help you focus on what you're doing next. If you're laying there without a plan, without an idea of what you're doing in the day, it's so easy to sort of, go on this endless cycle of what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen the next day, like, is the world ending? But yeah, having a routine, having a schedule, a sleep schedule is also really important. I'm going to talk about that in another video, I think, because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to sleep, but in short, it can really help affect your mood and it can sort out this hormonal imbalance you're experiencing. Doing these things that can help regulate your hormones such as sleep such as a healthy diet can really help you in the long run but i think i'm going to talk about that in another video because that's uh, a big topic so the next thing i wanted to talk about and 
I'm aware this is a very general point and everyone says this and it sounds so easy to do and it is talk to your friends. I think when anybody who's having a hard time or suffering through mental health issues, when when they hear, oh, just go talk to your mate, they're like, oh, sick. Not going to do that because it is scary. Um, and I wouldn't usually just say that as a piece of advice if you are struggling through different mental health issues. But I think, especially for this kind of topic, something that we are all undoubtedly experiencing is slightly different because say you have um, a diagnosis of depression, that is a complete unique experience to you and you experience it completely different to someone else. Whereas something like this that we're all experiencing it's likely that you're going to be met with a lot of understanding and no criticism whatsoever. It's not like your friends are going to come back with, what? You're not feeling great every day? Oh my God. It's more likely you're going to come to your friend and say, to be honest, mate, I'm not feeling great today. Yeah, fair enough. I don't always feel great. Maybe slightly less robotic because my, um, my acting skills aren't really there yet. But yeah, I, I just want to encourage that there will be so much understanding regardless of who your friends are because everyone is experiencing this. Whether or not they're good at talking about it is a different matter, but it can be so comforting just to know that someone else is experiencing what you're experiencing. And at the very least, I'm sure you'll be met with sympathy. Talking to someone can actually really help you understand your own emotions. It's it's easy to become overwhelmed with emotion and not rationalize what you're going through. And by talking it out and saying the words, it can make it a lot easier to understand. Just before I go on to the next method, I want to emphasize the importance of reaching out to your friends, um, especially those who have had mental health issues in the past, because these current times can really exaggerate their issues they've had in the past, especially those with sort of anxiety or depression or any affective or mood disorder. Um, this can be really tough times for them. So it's quite important that you reach out to them, and check up on them. Now, the next one uh, well, method I wanted to talk about uh, was exercise. And this might have been quite predictable for anyone that knows me, but there is a reason that so many people advise exercise as a way with coping with your mood. So when I talk about exercise, I'm not just talking about high intensity exercise or going for a run or going for a bike ride. It can just be going for a walk or just finding some finding a spot you like and just chilling out. What I'm really talking about is just getting outside and Get into fresh air because you know that solves everything. If we just have a look at Google here, pretty sure that it says it solves everything. It feels like a prison when you're stuck inside all the time. Well, personally, it does for me, um, and I know it does for some other people I've spoken to. And it's like you're locked up inside this house, and that's what it can feel like when you are in a low mood during this isolation. That they're locked up in your head. You don't have a way of expressing these or you don't have that release of emotion that you do when you can go see your friends or you can go do something you enjoy or you can go I don't know for a drive something like that just a way to get out of this sort of tight restriction that we have currently but by getting outside you you allow yourself to open up and release all this emotion, all this pent up feeling by holding these emotions inside and not processing, not, not thinking about them, not accepting them, is gonna make it worse. And by getting out, you allow yourself a bit of space, a bit of time, a bit quiet, just to think about what you're experiencing. Because you have to like experience these emotions and process these emotions before you can get over them. And after you've, really thought about what you're, what you're feeling and why you're feeling it, it can let you move on and you can get on with your day and you don't have to feel down. So I guess the last point I wanted to talk about, it's not 
it's not especially a method in itself, um, but it's it's an important stage in starting to feel better, and that's accepting how you're feeling. And I just touched on it there, but I just wanted to talk about it in a bit more detail. Um, accepting how you're feeling is an extremely important part of starting to feel better. You're not going to be able to move on or fully move on at least from your emotions without without a chance to process how you're feeling and understand why you're feeling it. And in the long run, you can really benefit from learning about your own emotions. You can develop that emotional intelligence that will help you cope with your emotions a lot better and maybe get over these moods quicker. And it's not necessary to say that you won't get in these moods in a later date, but you're definitely more likely to be able to experience them in a positive way, which may sound a bit contradictory to experience a negative emotion in a positive way, but it's it's like anything negative that can happen in your life, you can get benefits from it. And I, I know it's tough for extreme situations and that's not what I'm talking about right now. I'm saying when you, um, when you are down or when you're not feeling great, you can learn from it, learn how you cope with it and learn a bit more about yourself and how you cope in tough situations. It's, it's important to, I guess, act how you feel some of the time. It's like if you twisted your ankle, you wouldn't go for a run. So if you're feeling down, if you're feeling depressed, not to say that you have depression, but if you're feeling depressed, you, you don't have to go out and or talk to your mates or talk to your family like you're in a great mood. It's not, no one expects you to be in, a, in the best mood possible all the time. And that's something I think a lot of people struggle to wrap their heads around is that you don't need to act great all the time. I've woken up and I've been proper moody Margaret, right? And part of not faking how you feel is allowing yourself to properly experience your emotion and understand it. And I think that's that's an issue with a lot of mental health problems um, is that people feel the need to mask how they're feeling and that's not something that's a necessity. So when I asked on Instagram what other people do or the advice they have for when they're in a bad mood, um, a lot of people came back with listening to music as a response and this isn't something I do necessarily now, but it's definitely something I used to do when I was in a bad mood. And I was having to think about this and I'd never really thought about why it helps. I've got one theory, so I'm gonna share it with you. A lot of people listen to sad music when they're sad. And this might, on the face of it, seem counterproductive and just make you feel worse. But I think when you're surroundings and your environment aligns with your mood it can help accept how you feel and then the process begins of healing and this might make you feel like you're worse or in a worse mood or sadder even but I personally feel that this is just accepting in reality how you're feeling you're not fighting the emotion anymore and I think that's what music can do it can help create an atmosphere that you're comfortable in that you don't have to hide those emotions anymore. So it's like music is a way to externally view how they're feeling. For example, if someone really struggles with their emotions and struggles to accept how they feel, hearing sad music, you can view that sort of the sadness from an external sort of third person point of view. And that helps you, that, that mirrors your mood and helps you understand it. And to continue, um, a lot of people also recommended exercise, which obviously I've spoken about today. Um, To sort of summarise that, I think it's it's similar to music. It helps you create your own environment, which you are alone in, and you can fully let those feelings not take hold of you, but you can experience them fully. You don't have to mask them. You don't have to hide them. You can accept them, you can understand them, you can process why you're feeling, how you're feeling. 
and then you can start healing and then you can start moving on from that bad mood. So in order to not make the video too lengthy um, and also to make sure that I'm talking about things I'm knowledgeable on because I've experienced them or people I know have experienced them. I don't want to talk about things that I'm just reading off a website and repeating. I want to completely understand things. So there's a lot of different methods that help a lot of people in bad moods, like doing um, sort of writing down how they're feeling. And I think that's not something that particularly applies to me. So I don't want to talk too much on it because that's not my experience. But I will be leaving links to different websites and papers and all that sort of stuff that give different options on how to handle your mood. So feel free to check them out. Oh, I can do the whole YouTube thing in the description. But to sort of summarize the video, I want to emphasize that it is okay to be experiencing these down moods and these, these emotional states that you won't always experience there are things you could do to ease these moods and to sort of be able to move on quicker but the unfortunate truth is at the end of the day you're not going to be able to avoid feeling down i think i was watching a joe weller podcast and they had a psychologist on it and he said the phrase beautifully human and that really resonated with me because these emotions are they are beautiful things but unfortunately to experience the good ones you have to experience the bad ones at the same time and they are both equally beneficial for your life. You can learn from when you feel down, but you've got to be able to process them correctly. You, you, you don't want to avoid feeling sad. Ultimately, it is, it is a unique thing, and I'm aware that these methods or talking about this won't help everyone, but I'm hoping that some people resonate with this video and maybe try these methods, or at least begin to understand that their emotion is normal and it's not necessarily a negative thing to not be in a good mood all the time. I'm hoping the sort of passion I have for this has come across well because I'm aware in my introduction video, I seemed a bit like, my name is Josh and I like talking about mental health. That's not how I feel when I talk about it, but I was just talking about myself and believe it or not, some people might disagree, but I don't like talking about myself all the time. Sort of giving advice and talking about why we experience different things is something I'm genuinely passionate about and I'm hoping that's come across in this video. Um, if anyone has any feedback whatsoever on the lighting, on the camera angle, on the jumper I'm wearing, anything like that, any advice you have, I, you can message me, you can leave a comment, you can do whatever, but please just let me know any way I can improve this because it's genuinely something I want to work on and get better at. And yeah, if you could leave a like, like, comment, subscribe, hey, I haven't said that in a while, um, but if you could leave a like because it, it means it can reach out to more people, if you could share it so other people can watch it because it's so important that everyone starts learning about how they're feeling or why they're feeling certain things. And yeah, that's me. See you in a bit, lads.